this video finds you well. I hope you are safe and healthy. Today, I want to just dive into a track that I'm working on, and this is using only Bitwig devices, and hopefully I can release this in the near future. I just barely released a track called Bytrance that uses only Bitwig devices, uh, and it's only using synthesized sounds for the sound sources as well, so be sure to check out that project if you're interested. Uh, and I hope to do the same for this project, uh, release it to you and let you just kind of dive in and figure out what's going on with each of the tracks. And what's cool about this track is I'm kind of just developing my own sounds, my own presets from the ground up. Whereas uh, the last uh, song that I released and gave away the project file for, it was mostly using presets. And so that's so nice because I tweaked the presets a lot so you could kind of see how you can uh, tweet them and make the sounds your own and make them fit into a track but here these are just going to be all built from the ground up at least for now i haven't used any presets that could change we'll see but let, let's go ahead and listen to the song and then i'm just going to show you a technique that i stumbled upon i haven't used it before um, maybe people have gone over it on youtube but if they haven't uh you know you're watching it here so hopefully you'll find this helpful but all right let's listen to the track So as you can see and as you can hear, there are arpeggios. And let's just isolate that group and listen to that back. And as you may or maybe you didn't notice, there's actually two arpeggios here that are playing different sequences. But the MIDI is, be is exactly the same. It's playing the same sequence every single time, but I'm using MIDI effects devices to switch up which notes are actually being played. And I'm actually restricting certain notes from being played using the note filters. So let's just take a look at this first track that I have selected. We have a note echo set up within a polysynth. And then following that is a note effect selector. And then depending on what this random modulator is selecting at the time that notes are being played. Um, it's either going to let the MIDI pass through on layer one or in these note filters it's going to restrict uh, certain notes from being played. So let's listen to this track in isolation. So every now and then this particular note that I'm hovering over it's just not playing, and that's because of these note filters. And I have the note filter twice because that increases the probability that the note's not going to play. Uh, because each time the note filter track is selected, it's going to be filtering out that note. Whereas, so with two instances, uh, there's just a higher probability, if that makes sense. And so this is a pretty basic technique. Um, that you can employ yourself. I, I find this really helpful because, uh, you know, you get to lean on Bitwig to do some of the inspiration for you. You know, you don't have to come up with all these MIDI sequences yourself. You can just kind of build one clip, have some uh, MIDI effects, and then find some interesting variations. And you can iterate on one single pattern a bunch of different ways without having to actually come up with the idea yourself. And some people might think that's cheating, but I think that's just a clever way to use Bitwig to help you find ideas that work. So I'm also using the technique here. I have two no echoes. Let's listen to this track first. So that higher note is getting filtered out. Uh, and I'm doing the same thing here. I just have two note echoes inside of the note effects selector. I have a random modulator. Uh, I'm muting the note input on the note echo. So it's always just going to be the resulting MIDI that's generated by the note echo that comes out. And then just on one of these note echoes, I have a note filter device. And uh, let's listen to this group back again, now that you kind of know what to listen for. And you can get a sense of how this creates uh, an evolving groove that's just, you know, not going to repeat in an expected way, which is really cool for electronic music because 
usually have very repetitive patterns and sometimes it's cumbersome to switch them up. So you just stick some of these devices in here and you get some interesting variation. So I think that gives you a good idea of what's going on. And that's all I had to cover in this video. So hopefully this was helpful. And let me know if uh, you end up using this technique uh, to do something cool. And if you do, please feel free to share it with us. All right, thanks for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy, and have a great rest of your day.